At the start of this year, I made a video titled the top five breakouts for AEW in 2022. And in that video, I listed who I believed would be taking massive steps in their career in the next 12 months. It's fun to look at that video now, more than half of the way through the year. My list is pretty hit or miss. I listed guys like Alan Angels, who since has been let go by the company and Pride and Powerful, who I thought could be tag team champions this year, but through injury and even probably without, did not look close to being tag team champions. Also, just a quick side note, if I sounded different or my pacing was different in this video, I apologize. I am pretty clogged up right now. I'm, I'm quite sick, but I've, I've done my best. However, I had a couple of more accurate answers because, you know, I'm pretty good at understanding wrestling. Guys like Jungle Boy, who seems to be beginning his journey on his breakout moment in the second half of this year. And of course, Ricky Starks, who is similarly commencing on his own journey into a legitimate singles wrestler. I first laid eyes on Ricky Starks a few years ago on NWA Power. Back when AEW first started, me and my brother used to watch Dynamite followed by Power. Not for long, as the pandemic completely shut down NWA programming, but I first saw wrestlers like Eddie Kingston and Thunder Rosa there, just to name a few. Ricky Starks clearly had the charisma and the crowd loved him. He won the television title relatively soon after I began to watch it, but with the aforementioned shutdown of NWA, Ricky Starks was not on my screen anymore. After answering Cody's TNT Open Challenge and joining AEW permanently, I knew Ricky Starks was in good hands, and his joining of Team Taz was definitely a step in the right direction. Truthfully, Team Taz really didn't work out the way I thought it would. Brian Cage unfortunately never resonated with the fans in a heel or a face role. His introduction to the company was great, but for some reason it seems Tony Khan couldn't find the X Factor when it came to Cage. And personally, I've always felt the same about Cage. I'm not sure what it is about him, but even in Lucha Underground I always felt he was missing something. I'm not sure if it's his height, or maybe that he's too big, or that he's not that great on the mic, but I could never see Cage as a world champion at the top level. That's not to say he isn't a great professional wrestler, he just misses something. And nothing exemplified that more than when Ricky Starks joined Team Taz. Almost instantly, a guy who came in as the second member of Team Taz became the ace of the group, outshining Cage in almost every department, where Cage couldn't add to Taz's promos and vignettes, Starks was willing to grab the microphone and ooze confidence and believability. Where Cage didn't know how to engage the crowd, Starks had them eating out of the palm of his hand, regardless of whether he had them booing him for his actions or what he said, or cheering him on the way to the ring as he flung his arms in the air with every beat of his intro song. Taz was the coach of the team, and Ricky Starks was his captain. When I watched Ricky in NWA, he was actually a face, and I knew he could still work well well as a face, but his work as a heel was just as good. At the end of the day, he's just a great mic worker who can make you believe what he's saying and make you buy into a match or a feud regardless of if you're cheering or booing him. I did have a feeling that his ultimate fate in AEW was going to lead to a face run, but I wouldn't have been upset if he remained a heel for the rest of his time in AEW. Ever since Hook's introduction to AEW, it was pretty evident that the FTW belt and Team Taz's focus had completely shifted. No longer was Taz running the operations of Team Taz as tightly as he used to. Starks and Hobbs had developed more into a tag team going for the championships over the last couple of months, and Hook has been doing his own thing. When Starks was challenged by Danhausen, of all people, for the FTW title, I knew that Ricky's time in Team Taz was coming to an end. One thing, however, I did not predict at all was exactly how Starks was departing from Team Taz and Team Taz's future in general. In my mind, what I saw was Starks and maybe even Hobbs beating Danhausen down after the match for disrespecting Ricky and thinking he even had a chance at defeating him for his championship just to have Hook come in and save his quote-unquote friend causing a divide in the team Taz ranks. Taz would obviously side with his son and their mission would be to retrieve the FTW title that originally belonged to Taz and by rights was Hook's to inherit. What I really did not foresee was what we ended up getting, and while my version held a lot more story between Taz, Hook, and Ricky, it left Hobbs behind as just a bodyguard, where he really doesn't have any beef with Taz. But more importantly, my version left Starks as a heel, and as of late, he's been getting some super hot face reactions even before what transpired. The crowd has been absolutely loving him, and a lot of people wanted to see him and Hobbs become tag team champions, and his 
FTW Open Challenge has made him even more endearing as he openly welcomes a second challenger after he's won his first match. Instead, what we get is a lot more sensical when you take into consideration what the long-term plan for Ricky Starks is, and that is for him to be a face. After losing to Hook, Ricky actually congratulates him on the win with a fist bump in what was a really nice moment and begins to pour his heart out on the mic talking about how it's his time to now be the man. The crowd is behind him, I'm behind him, he's hulking up, Hobbs is there with him and bang! Just like that, he's out cold. His trusted partner, a man that has been by his side since he joined Team Taz. Hobbs lays him out. Something about the towering and menacing figure of powerhouse Hobbs standing over the much smaller Starks sent a chill down my spine, and Taz's perplexing commentary doubled down on what I was feeling. This was Hobbs turning on Starks, but this was also the foundations of Team Taz crumbling around us. I have to say, it's an absolutely brilliant path to take. Hobbs' story is clear and his position will be a very rational one. Hobbs wants to be successful, and with Ricky, he hasn't been. Starks, on the other hand, despite coming up short in terms of tag team gold, has had the FTW title on his shoulder and has been the jewel of the Team Taz crown. Hobbs has been an afterthought in many regards, and for Starks to think he can go off on a promo talking about his time, nah, 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 nah. Hobbs will be saying, it's Hobbs time. For some reason, I never saw Starks versus Hobbs coming out of the breakup of Team Taz. I was so fixated on Hook overthrowing Starks and being the leader of Team Taz that I was blinded to the fact that it wouldn't be beneficial at all to Ricky Starks and that Hobbs wouldn't really be involved at all. This scenario allows Hook to move on with his life. It turns Ricky Starks face and creates a monster heel out of Hobbs, all the while eliminating a faction that unfortunately has been a non-factor in AEW. And as much as this is a breakout for Ricky Starks, it is also a breakout for powerhouse Hobbs. Regardless of who wins or loses this feud, both of these men will be elevated. I guess you could still argue that Hobbs will be sort of left in the dust after he most likely loses a feud to Ricky Starks, but I would disagree. Not everyone who loses a feud loses long term. I feel like Hobbs could do his best work in this feud, and this could really be his launching pad moving forward. I think he can surprise a lot of people because he's actually good on the mic and he's obviously good in the ring. As for Ricky, the crowd will love him and they'll be well and truly behind him in this feud. His transformation into a face will be, I believe, a positive one, but I do hope he keeps a bit of his feistiness in his personality. Ricky really shouldn't change that much, so I hope he isn't watered down at all. I could very well see a TNT title in either of these men's futures in the next 12 to 18 months. I guess an interesting question, and I might leave a poll in the top right corner, is who do you actually rate more? Ricky Starks or Powerhouse Hobbs? Or I guess who do you think has the brighter future? For me, it is Ricky Starks, but Powerhouse Hobbs is more than capable and could be a mainstay on the AEW roster for years to come. I'm overall very satisfied with how Team Taz broke up, and I liked Taz's specific commentary bit. He spoke for about a minute or two about Team Taz, and he wishes all three men the best luck. Didn't mention Brian Cage, obviously. But the fact that he still wishes Hobbs luck shows that Taz has no skin in the game here. He obviously loves his son. His son's got the belt. That's fantastic. But with regards to Starks and Hobbs, it's lovely to see that Taz is not picking a side. Taz is a very neutral commentator. He's not really a face commentator like Tony, like Excalibur, and like like JR. And I think Taz, by the way, and I'm going to say this at the end of the video, but I have to say this, Taz on commentary, for Dynamite specifically, has been such a welcomed addition. The team of Tony, JR, and Excalibur, while all fantastic commentators, has grown a little bit bland with all three of them being face, and sometimes Taz can shed light on a heel's mentality a little bit better. And I think that's actually a very important move that Tony Khan has made, having Taz join Dynamite as a commentator. He understands why Hobbs is doing what he's doing. He's obviously rooting for Ricky Starks. He did not want the breakup of Team Taz, but it's clear that that's what had to happen. And he wishes all his three guys the best of luck. And that was beautiful. That's a great moment as well. If you did enjoy, please do leave a like on it. Your guys' support has been ridiculous over the last, let's say, month or two, especially with the likes. You guys are smashing the likes. So let's keep that going. Hope you did enjoy today's video and I hope you've had a good day. I'll see you in the next one soon. Stay stunning.